You get drafted to the Knicks, or you get drafted to play quarterback for the New York Jets, and there goes your career. Uber skills with. I mean, Jamal. Uber skills. Uber skills. He's an Uber driver. You want the noise brought on you? Because here it comes. What? The noise. The New York City Knicks. Now, listen. The New York City Knicks, this is a new slogan. That's it. <laughs> we, we got a bunch of guys who were valued much higher than where we selected them. Uh, OB Toppin, if it wasn't the Knicks guy going into it, it was their second guy, and they got him at a pick that they shouldn't have got him at. Um, whether they were looking forward to LaMelo Ball, he was selected, obviously. And then the falling of guys like OB Toppin, Denny. There was a whole bunch of of weird things going on in this draft, and it was rocked off by the Chicago Bulls. So huge thank you to those guys because, I mean, Patrick Williams, hopefully for that franchise, he's one of the best guys out of this draft, but honestly, huge head scratcher and and played in the Knicks' favor. You guys got – we got Obi Toppin in this situation who is college player of the year, um, played at Dayton, and was looking like a team that if March Madness happened that was headed to the Final Four and – this guy had a real shot to actually take their team to the chip and yep. and win that Absolutely. thing. So this guy coming in, this is one of those guys that the Knicks haven't had in a long time, which is he's not a project player. He's not gonna he's not gonna step into this situation and have to figure out what he should do, it, what, his role on this offense. His role is pretty much solidified and and they're gonna build upon this. So the first pick, great. Then you move down. I mean, just like I said before, the trading up and down and things like that to give up no value, but actually gain and and uh, and and group up this draft capital. Then you you pick Emmanuel quickly, who I assume they try to trade down and get R.J. Hampton at that situation. R.J. Hampton goes off the board, and everybody's talking about that the Knicks reached for quickly. He would be available in the second round, but at that point, they're looking for their point guard of the future, yep, yep. right? And if R.J. Hampton is gone and that's the guard you were looking for, you have to look at number two and you have to get him. The same way I always talk about how Daniel Jones, I mean, everybody, it's it's, par- it's, it's, <laughs> it's there's going to be sides to it, but in reality, the Giants believe they had their guy and they selected him. The Knicks believed that their guy wasn't going to be there, so they selected him. Ended up moving the second round pick because I guess they didn't love anybody else in the draft. Moved it for a future second, which can be packaged later on for a deal midway through the season. Maybe you like an Oladipo. Maybe you want to bring in Russell Westbrook, one of those guys. And now you have the opportunity. Um, And then even after the draft, with the signing of the undrafted Miles Powell, who who is, we all love on the table right here, is is one of these guys who's going to come in here and get buckets. If you're a Knicks fan, you know Alonzo Trier. You know this is a spark kind of guy. He will fulfill the same role and maybe then some. So, all in all, I believe it was a great draft by the Knicks. Maybe not top one, but nothing less of top two. Well, so they traded the pick Mm -hmm. before R.J. Hampton. So they had the opportunity to draft him. They trade that pick to the Timberwolves. Yep. I I think they dodge a bullet because I think R.J. Hampton is one of those guys who comes in with a lot of hype because, um, you know, we followed his high school career. The guy can't shoot, Mm -hmm. and you can't play in the NBA as a small guard if he can't shoot. And um, I, I think that they really dodge a bullet um, not drafting him. I, I, and also, in terms of a, a development standpoint, Denver is a much better place to develop, a much better place to learn a system, to work on his shooting, um, and a place that really val- can value his, his high level of defense. Doesn't so he need to step up right away. Right. I'm actually happy mm-hmm. for him that he didn't go to the Knicks because, like yeah. I say all the time, you get drafted to the Knicks or you get drafted to play quarterback for the New York Jets, and there goes your career. Yeah, and—, and- Uh, Happy for the guy, honestly, because like you guys said, the Knicks wouldn't be a fit for him. And then if you come into the NBA and one of your weaknesses is something that the guy you're going to be learning uh, from has uber skills with. I mean, Jamal's uber skills, uber skills. He's an uber driver. And (laughs) and he's listen, if you don't know how to get buckets, Jamal Murray will teach you. And that's essentially what I'm trying to say.